Hello, welcome back to Casablanca. In this episode, we will be talking about the Spitfire Grill, which is another one I'm sure most people hasn't heard of, haven't heard of. Uh, this one is a 1996 film directed by Lee David Zlotoff, and it stars Allison Elliott, Ellen Burstyn, and Marcia Gay Harden. I think out of those three names, that well, four names, including the director, the only one people would probably know is Ellen Burstyn. She played the mother on The Exorcist, and she recently reprised her role for Exorcist Believer. This film uh, starts off with uh, the opening credit shows her in prison. She's at like a call center in the prison. And uh, at the end of the opening credit, it shows her being released and then shows her like, heading to a small town. She basically goes to a small town called Gilead to start over. And she gets a job at a little local diner called the Spitfire Grill, thus the name. And Ellen Burstyn is actually the owner of the Spitfire Grill. She's uh, this older lady. And I've always, I don't know if it's obvious based on some of the movies I've chosen to cover. or Because I talk about these kind of movies a lot. I like small town movies. There's like this. And then I did uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. and And like. It's like a bunch of other ones. I have a couple more coming up this season. Uh, at least the first half. There's uh, not a lot of movies people have heard of. Anyway, so this one I actually saw for the first time like 20 years ago. And I didn't remember anything except for the very beginning and the very end. So... All the stuff that happened in the movie, I had completely forgotten about, but I, I knew where it was going to end, so it's like, oh, well, I know where this is going to go. You, usually, if you haven't seen the movie in a long time, and you only remember a couple parts, you want to have forgotten the end, so that, oh, you're experiencing this for the first time again, but nope, I remembered. But it didn't ruin the movie, it just... It didn't help that I, I I basically had it spoiled just from having seen it already. You get the idea. I've seen it and I remember the end. So like I said a minute ago, the uh, it's a small town movie. And I, I always like small town movies because um, it's like there's not a lot of characters. And the characters that are there, like they usually all know each other. Um Especially, it's like a like an Avonlea situation. This one feels closer to Avonlea than um, than like the Gilbert Grape, but uh, this one is like a more modern version of that. And especially since like the town are is full of a bunch of gossips. This town is full of gossips. You we don't spend a lot of time with. The town people, like, I don't even remember the names. I literally just watched the movie. The credits just finished rolling and I started recording. I don't remember everyone's names. I don't even remember, like, half the characters' names. I think, I know they said it because they were, like, they would have to say the names. And, and, like, I knew who they were talking about when they would say it. But, like, I didn't retain the information. But we didn't spend that much time with those characters. You just, so when we did get to see them, they were basically, like, caricatures of small town people, like, when it, this lady comes on screen, oh, she's the town gossip, because every time you see her, she's got the... <laughs> uh, as soon as she sees Percy, who's the, the main character, the, the, the Percy was the one who was in prison and is new. For, as soon as he sees her, she's literally openly gossiping about her, like, almost to her face. And so you immediately know the type of character she is. And every time you see her, that's the type of person she is. And so, like, I feel like this one, I quit. This, the point of the story wasn't to, for a small town. We need to focus on the characters. The focus was on the characters they focused on, which is Percy and then the the the, the main people, like at the Spitfire Grill, the the uh, the owner and and all that. And 
yeah, there was a small story going on. Um, I wasn't entirely sure the time frame of of the of the movie. I know it was at least two or three months. But yeah, there was uh, I don't want to say character growth. Uh, <laughs> I will say that the at the beginning of the movie. Shelby, who's becomes one, uh, I think she's the niece. Or, okay, so her nephews, um, no, <sighs> Hannah Burstyn's character's name is Hannah. Her nephew's wife, Shelby, works at the diner and becomes good friends with. Percy. See, I I do remember some of the names. It's just it's going to be confusing. They go to uh, well, Shelby's secret place, quote-unquote, was the church. But since there, there was a, a, a history at this town where there was a lumber mill or a quarry and it dried up and so there's not a lot of people here so they can't afford to pay a minister so the church is empty and everything's covered in dust and so like that's her secret place at the beginning of the movie no one's been in this church in a long time except for Shelby in fact she even tells Percy you're the first person I brought in here at the end of the movie everyone's in the church which that they didn't actually build up to that it wasn't like like a plot point that like they kept mentioning uh no one's been in that church for a long time they just mentioned it once and then at the end it's everyone's in the church like, oh okay that that's a thing now i guess <laughs> i mean they're in there for a reason but i don't want to spoil anything um this one i did have to buy on dvd because i didn't find it streaming anywhere however i didn't find it streaming anywhere after I got it on DVD in the mail, well, Amazon delivery or whatever, I did find out that it was streaming on Hoopla. For those who don't know, Hoopla is like a library app. You you download it, you create an account, and then you uh, you sign in to your local library using your library card. And then they basically have... Uh, it's different depending on the library um, I have a friend in Canada who uses Hoopla, and and her her limits are smaller than my limits because I have San Francisco Public Library, which their limits are a little higher. But I can check out anything that's available at the San Francisco Public Library, and you could be able to check out anything from your local library, like digital content, like ebooks, audiobooks, movies. All that sort of stuff. I mostly use it for audiobooks. The, occasionally, I do check out movies on there, and uh, there's a Hoopla app on the on my TV. I think it's on the PS5. I could be wrong, but I do know there is an app on the my on the smart TV. And I found out after the DVD arrived that it is on Hoopla. So if you want, well, it's on my Hoopla. My Hoopla is different from your Hoopla. But if you live in the San Francisco area and have a San Francisco Public Library card, you can go on Hoopla and check out the Spitfire Grill. I do recommend it. It is. I, I, it's a. It's a good movie. I like it. Uh, kind of the bias again because of the whole small town movie thing. I did see here on the Wikipedia something a little random that. Um, Apparently, this movie inspired a musical. There is a musical called The Spitfire Grill. It's an off-Broadway production, and let's see, it ran... I think it only ran in 2001. Oh, some of the songs from the, mu from the, the musical apparently went on to become popular. So... Um, this isn't exactly a movie I would consider to be right for a musical, but, I mean, Spongebob got the musical, there's a Spider-Man musical, there's even a Back to the Future musical, everything's a musical now, so, 
sure, make the Spitfire Grill into a musical. That sounds like something I would joke about. It's like, yeah, this a Spitfire Grill, let's make it into a musical. But no, they, they really made it into a musical on Broadway. Well, off-Broadway, actually. But I am kind of curious about it now. I wonder if... Well, I mean, if it only ran in 2001, I don't think it would... I know there's a Broadway... Wait, there... Oh! There are links on the Wikipedia. There's an official website. I'm going to go to it right now. Spitfire Girl Musical. Aha! There, uh, there's a store. I can purchase the... I can purchase the album. Oh, it's on Spotify. All right, let's look at the Spitfire Girl musical on Spotify. No, I'm not gonna. There is one song sung in the movie, and I'm looking, and I don't see it. Um, no, dude, no, I'm not seeing. Nope, there is a song sung in the movie briefly, and you would think they would take advantage of that, but it's not on the on on here. Anyway, that's a thing I know now, and now you know. There is a Spitfire Girl musical, and even though we can't see it, we can listen to the soundtrack on Spotify. Check it out on Hoopla. Um... I just realized I haven't really talked much about the movie itself. Um, Plot-wise, I don't want to... Like, I don't want to say there's not much going on here, but, like, there is. But there's a lot of plot threads that don't seem to go anywhere. There's, like, one or two plots that actually seem resolved. Um, but then there's just, like, a lot going on. It's kind of like, uh, like I said, with What You Think Gilbert Grape, where uh, other than the fact that this is when Percy comes into town and then like things start happening because uh, like everything that happens happens because she comes into town. However, with what's eating Gilbert grape, it's not like, like the, the plot lines that are there. It's like, this is just like a week in this town, like Napoleon dynamite. It's a week in this town. We're just witnessing a week in this town. It's kind of like this movie, except like, Things happen because of the events like of her coming into town, and then there is a conclusion to the story, but like not everything's resolved. So like because because of that, like my mind seems to, tends to focus on the things that were resolved, and there's not a whole lot. But like I don't. That sounds like I'm putting it down. It is a good movie, and there is there's a. Now that I've, now that I'm thinking about it, it's like this isn't the best way to approach this. There's a lot going on in this movie, but there isn't at the same time. It's only like an hour and a half long, I believe. Um, it could also be fleshed out in like a show. If they made a Spitfire Grill TV show, there we go. That's what I'm thinking. It could be fleshed out better in like a show. Because there's a lot going on, and it feels like they're trying to tell too much story in the, the small time they have. And if they were to do like a Northern Exposure type show, then they would actually have more time to tell more stories in this small town. And like the way it ends, like it's not like a cliffhanger, like, oh, there's going to be a sequel. It's like, it ends in a way that's like, oh, this isn't the end of the story. There's going to be more happening. And I would kind of like the sequel to like see more of the story of what's going to happen next to these characters. And then like what happens in the last scene? I want to see what happens after that. It's like, I kind of want to say what happens, but at the same time, I realize that probably nobody watching, uh, listening to this episode has seen it. And I'm trying to encourage you to go see it. If this was like a very popular movie that everyone's seen, I would be like, oh yeah, and then this happens. Um, and then what happens to this person next? But instead, I'm, I'm wording it exactly like that. <laughs> <sighs> I 
yeah, probably not the best way to talk about that. I'm trying not to spoil anything because I want you to see it. Check it out on Hoopla if it's on your Hoopla. Or, do like I did, buy it on DVD. On Amazon. Anyway, I'm going to end this one right here. And cut. Cut.